In this final video for section 6.3, we are going to look at some slightly more complex evaluations. For the last few problems on your homework, you will be asked to calculate some exact answers, which means that we can't really use the calculator since it will be kicking out decimal approximations. Because these questions are multi-step, we really need to think about the effect that the limited domain and range required by our inverse functions will have on our answers. For our first example, let's try to evaluate the expression and find the inverse sine of the cosine of 11 pi over 6. Like in all good order of operations problems, we like to start with the inside most parentheses. In this case, that means that we want to take the cosine of 11 pi over 6. We can look that up on our unit circle. It's the square root of 3 over 2. Then we need to find the inverse sine of the square root of 3 over 2. Well, looking back at our unit circle, there are two angles that have this sign, pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. However, since we're looking for the inverse sign, we must choose the answer that lies in our restricted 1 to 1 range from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. The only angle that works is pi over 3. Our next example becomes a little bit more complex. Here we'd like to evaluate the expression cosine of the inverse sine of 12 thirteenths. If we try to find an exact answer for the inverse sine of 12 over 13, we have a slight problem since this is not one of our commonly known numbers. Generally, we default to our calculator, but these problems very specifically will ask for an exact answer. So let's think a little deeper about what this problem is actually asking us to find. We could reword the problem in the following way. What is the cosine of the angle whose sine is 12 over 13. Well, we've solved problems like this before. We can use the Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Plugging in the 12 over 13 for sine, we find that 12 over 13 squared plus cosine squared equals 1. 144 over 169 plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Subtracting 144 over 169, we get cosine squared of theta equals 29, oops, not 29, 25 over 169. Then take the square root of each side to get the cosine of theta equals plus or minus 5 over 13. Well, which one? The arc sine of 12 over 13, or inverse sine of 12 over 13, indicates an answer between negative pi over 2 and 2, and pi over 2, rather. Since the 12 over 13 was positive, then that means we're going to be in the first quadrant. Since the cosine of an angle in the first quadrant is positive, then we want to choose positive 5 over 13 as our result. For a final example, let's consider the similar but quite different problem. find the cosine of the inverse sine of negative 12 thirteenths this time. Again, we want to start at our inside most parentheses, but we realize we don't know an exact angle that has a sine of negative 12 over 13. Since we don't actually care about the angle, but rather want to find the cosine of that angle, we can use the Pythagorean identity. 
sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, plugging in the negative 12 thirteenths for the sine. We find that negative 12 thirteenths squared plus cosine squared theta equals 1. 144 over 169 plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Cosine squared theta equals 25 over 169. Then take the square root of each side to get the cosine of theta equals 25, oops, equals plus or minus 5 thirteenths. Well, which one? Since the arc sine of negative 12 over 13 indicates an answer between negative pi over 2 and t pi over 2, and the 12 over 13 was negative, that means our answer was between negative pi over 2 and 0, which is the fourth quadrant. Well, the cosine happens to be positive in both the first and the fourth quadrant, which means that we again need to pick the positive 5 over 13 result for our answer in this case. And we find that the cosine of the inverse sine of negative 12 thirteenths is positive 5 over 13. Think of these last few problems as a little bit of a puzzle. Make sure you pay attention to the limited domains and ranges of the inverse trig functions when making decisions about your solutions so that your answers end up in the correct quadrant.